In my previous video on how to become an engineering manager, I've shown you the steps you can take to move from senior software engineer or tech lead into a manager role. That was a very tactical video. I've shown you what skills you need to learn in order to get there. In this video, I'd like to zoom out and look at the bigger picture. What does it take to be a great engineering manager? And what it means to be an engineering manager in the long run. What if your team grows, pressure increases, or your agenda starts filling up with too many things to do? What then? What if things go wrong? What is your North Star? Let's talk about responsibilities first. Now, obviously the engineering manager role differs from company to company, but the mental model I'll present here should transfer pretty well. As an engineering manager, I see mainly three areas of responsibilities. Operational management, change management, and people management. Operational management is your reactive mode. It is you reacting to things that happen. You don't have to start looking for this work. This work will come to you. Problems will arise and they will come to you. Suddenly it's the end of the year and you need to get a feedback and write a manager's assessment. Approving things, vacations, conferences, budgets, writing hours in some system, hiring, onboarding, offboarding, all of this work will just come to you. The next area of responsibility is change management. This is your proactive mode. This is you turning your vision into reality. If you want your teams to do more pair programming, for example, and you're slowly influencing, coaching and educating them into this, then that is what I call change management. You have thought of a strategy and you're slowly and methodically working towards this goal. Nobody else is initiating this. Nobody else is chasing this. You are championing this cause. That is change management. And the third one is people management. As a manager, you are responsible for developing people into better versions of themselves. You are facilitating and enabling growth through coaching. You do 80% of this work in one-on-one -on -one meetings. These three things may seem straightforward, but it's often quite hard to prioritize them because your reactive mode has a tendency to eat up all your time. And if you let it, you'll become very focused on the short term. This will create many problems for you and your people in the near future and the far future. And the way to deal with this is time management and organizational skills. Let's talk about how to divide your attention. If you want to be effective, not only reactive to your environment, then you really need to get a handle on those time management and organizational skills. You may think you already have the required time management skills, but as a leader, you will get access to more information and it is very easy to fall into the trap of too much scope, too much to do, too much to react to. Let's look at the dynamic between those three responsibilities. Operational management has to happen. And it will happen anyway. It will just come to you. Others will just create work for you. Things will just happen. So you need to set a maximum time on this. You need to limit it. Change management, on the other hand, requires more deliberative thinking. It is both more difficult and more rewarding than operational management. But it is not something that will happen by itself because it's initiated by you. It's easy to forget. And it's often the first thing that gets compromised. So you need to set a minimum time on this. This needs to be allowed to grow. And people management can be everything. Great, boring, frustrating, maddening, and very rewarding. It's both reactive and proactive, but it mostly takes the form of one-on-one -on -one meetings in your calendar. It has a very predictable time cost. In those meetings, you connect with people and you coach them. The big insight here is that you need to decide how much time you want to spend on people management and change management. And then operational management will simply grow to fill the time available. The rest of the time will just be operational management in reality. The time you spend on people management is simply a function of how much people do you have and how often do you want to talk to them? Is it weekly or every other week? And how much you spend on change management is simply how much goals have you set for yourself? How much vision of the future do you have? How fast do you want to go there? The hack is to sit down every week, every month, and every quarter for long-term thinking. This is a very important step. Skip this step and you will succumb to a life of reactivity, to a job where you will only do operational management. Taking time for change management could simply be a focus block in your calendar, a non-negotiable, non-movable focus block. You absolutely cannot move it, not do it, schedule other things over it, let other people schedule over it. It has to be non-negotiable. Otherwise, you will enter this downward spiral of reactivity. Your weekly focus block could be two hours or four hours. Your monthly could be four hours. 
Your quarterly could be a day. These are just suggestions. In this time, you process the raw data that you have generated. And with raw data, I mean the notes that you have taken during meetings and other actions here and there and IDs you've had, you've always jotted them down in your note-taking system. But this is raw data. You need to sit back, relax, and take the time to think about the future given this context. You need to distill insights and actions from them. When thinking about the future, that means for me making a strategy. And making a strategy, as I've read in Good Strategy, Bad Strategy, is having a diagnosis, a vision and a plan. A diagnosis is what is the problem, a vision is where do I want to be instead, and a plan is how do I get there, what concrete steps do I take, in what order. Only if your strategy is this specific will you actually be able to succeed. The second part of the hack is to schedule recurring one-on-one -on -one meetings in your calendar with your people and never cancel one. Just move it to a better slot if it doesn't fit. Okay, you can cancel if you're on vacation for a week or more, but if that's not the case, never cancel one. They have to be sacred. This is where you do a very important part of your job. Half of the things you think of in your change management block, you can work on in your one-on-ones. The one-on-ones are the best instrument you have to coach people into better versions of themselves, which is a very important part of being an engineering manager. After having those non-negotiables in the agenda, you have your one-on-ones, you have your focus blocks, the operational management will just happen in between. It will just grow to fill the time available. And that's okay, because it does need to happen. It just shouldn't be allowed to take over your entire job as a leader. And that's it. I hope this was helpful. I hope you liked it. I would love to hear your thoughts. Do you see this behavior in other managers in your company? Please leave a comment and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.